Let's talk about the case, the new CRM system. And what I would like to do is I would like to give you a very brief reflection from my side, from the author's side of the case. So I have written it and talk a little bit about what are the ideas behind the case. So how could you analyze it? And I'm not saying that the very brief analysis that I'm going to provide here is comprehensive. You might come up with totally different ideas and totally different perspectives on the case, which is usually quite common in case studies. But nevertheless, I think there are a couple of themes and a couple of things that are quite interesting to reflect and that are quite worthwhile to talk about. So let's briefly reflect the case. And I mean, you all have read it. Hopefully you all have read it before you listen to the reflection. And it's a case about the implementation of a new CRM system, a customer relationship management system, which is quite a common tool. Basically, a lot of companies are using it. It's kind of a standard tool, at least in organizations that are quite large. And this organization is not extremely large and the sales team is quite new, which will become an issue later on if we talk about how well trained they are, how experienced they are. So it's a new team, it's a medium-sized company, 600 people roughly um, that they have. And initially the project seemed to be extremely promising. Everybody's saying, yeah, I want that. And Rebecca is quite surprised. Rebecca, the consultant who is asked to implement that software, she is quite surprised because in the beginning everybody said, yeah, it's an amazing tool and we need that, we want that, especially the VP and Hans, the head of sales. But all the people also said that they wanted it. And you might be familiar with the concept of organizational silence and violent politeness. If you are not, that might be a little bit of the theory behind that. So people are looking at you, people are very happy, and people say, yeah, let's go for it. But this is what they say, but not what they actually do. So this is violent politeness. If they look at you, if they smile at you and say, yes, I'm going to do it, and they're not going to do it. But let's skip the theory part for now. And maybe let's get back to that later on. So somehow people are not using the system, despite they said it's a very good thing and they wanted to do it. And the implementation seems to be the big issue here. But this is only the issue that is written in the case. And I think that is not the real issue. And we're going to cover the issues in a couple of minutes. So we're going to talk about that. Because the real issues are, from my point of view, that are the issues that are below the surface. And that is mainly that Rebecca, the consultant, is very new in her management role. She was a techie, so to speak, and is now this is her first implementation project at the customer. And she's struggling with the transition into the new role where she has to manage things, where she actually has to consult a client and not just, I mean, that's difficult enough, but not just implement something from a technological point of view. And it's quite interesting for me because the behavior that Rebecca shows is somehow mirrored by Hans, Hans, the head of sales, who is also not filling his role as the head of the sales department. He's the best salesperson in the company, like someone is commenting in the case. And that might be because of a reason, because the company is struggling, which is another issue that comes up, and he's trying to save the company, and he's trying to save his team, basically. And that is probably the reason why he is forced out of his role as a leader, which leads us, by the way, to the discussion, what is a good leader? Is this someone who is involved in day-to-day -day business or is this someone who is not in being involved in day-to-day -day business at all, to call out two extremes? And the problem here is that Rebecca cannot see or neglects the soft aspects of such a project. And she's surprised by the dynamics of the system without being able to see and solve the issue herself. And she's having quite some pressure I mean, Thomas, the VP of the client system, is putting pressure on her because she's saying she's responsible. She has to fix that. And by any means, you could argue she is responsible. You can also argue she's not responsible because implementing this thing is probably her task. But if the people don't use it, she can't do anything about it. At least that's my take. But that's something that you can 
discuss in class. And again, it's also, pressure is also put onto Rebecca because it's the first project that will be the basis for her performance review. So if she is messing it up, probably she will get a negative performance review. And you can find arguments for a negative review or against a negative review, which will be quite an interesting discussion and probably will lead you about the, uh, about the discovery about your own values. So how should you treat such a thing? So let's take a look at the overall issues and the overall involved people in the case. And we have a couple of roles, a couple of people um, in the case. We have the mentor. We have Rebecca, we have Thomas, the VP, we have Hans, the head of the sales team, and we have the sales team with certain individuals, more experienced individuals, less experienced individuals. And let's briefly, very briefly, take a look at each of them. And let's start with the mentor. Rebecca is trying to get help from her mentor, and that is quite a catch at the end of the case where it is uh, saying she's waiting, she has an appointment with her mentor and she's waiting and her co coffee has already gone cold and thinking that she had an appointment sitting there, arriving there with a hot coffee, her mentor seems to let her wait, which is quite strange because you could ask the question, is this important, this relationship, mentor-mentee relationship for the mentor? So you could argue that the mentor does not mentor Rebecca and does not support Rebecca. On the other hand, you could argue that if Rebecca is asking for help extremely late, probably that's not the fault of the mentor. That is the problem of Rebecca. That is one reason why I would say it is tricky for a performance review if she's asking for help so late that it is basically too late, probably. So let's, so the mentor mentoring project or idea seems to be a bit strange in this organization, but let's do not discuss this too much in depth because it's also just a side show, so to speak. Let's focus a little bit on Rebecca. And Rebecca, I already said it, she was promoted from a technical expert to a project manager. And one issue is that it seems that she maintains her technical view. She, she says, it's not that much of an issue. It's basically taking my own medicine. I'm using it. So if I'm using it, the client must be happy as well, which is obviously very short-sighted. And she does not fill her new role. She seems to have issues to get out of that. And this can be one reason why the project derails. And Rebecca seems to be totally lost. Plus, she is made responsible by the client. Plus, she gets the pre the extra pressure because of the performance review. So, so she's basically pretty much lost and doesn't know what to do. And it seems like her team is also not very helpful. By the way, they're asking to pay a bonus. And that is something that we will come back to when we talk about certain options. So Rebecca is basically struggling with her role because she's, she still thinks it's super easy. Maybe she has underestimated the whole project. And like I said, some of the pressure is coming from Thomas, Hans' boss, the VP. And the VP seems to kick off several projects, several initiatives with extremely high ambitions. And maybe that is Thomas' task. He has to do that. He has to raise the bar. But what he doesn't see is that uh, probably the CRM tool is a golden fantasy. By the way, that's another little bit of theory. Uh, the golden fantasy where people hope that if they do one thing, the law of the instrument, that everything will be solved, which is obviously not happening. So he is trying to raise the bar. He's putting pressure on Hans as well, not only on Rebecca, and he doesn't coach Hans, which is a problem because as a leader, I would assume that Thomas is seeing what Hans is doing or not doing, not leading his team, not being in his role, and trying to adjust that, trying to coach Hans a little bit. But his reaction basically is, Thomas' reaction basically is to put pressure and to blame people that they have to do something. And I'm asking myself the question, is Thomas probably on the firing line? Because he decided to implement a new sales team, and I'm 
asking myself the question, will the company be successful with a sales team that is so underperforming as it is at the moment? So Thomas, big issue from my point of view, but also not as important as Rebecca and Hans. So let's talk about Hans real quick. Hans also got promoted from salesman to head of sales. So he's in a pretty similar position compared to Rebecca, just in another department, just in another field. And like Rebecca is maintaining her technical view, he sticks to behavior that made him and probably sales, him as a salesperson, very successful in the past. He is selling stuff. And this is quite um, a common behavior, especially if people are under stress, they regress. If they are insecure about the new role, they try to fall back into behavior that they know, that they made them successful. So in Hans' case, this is selling stuff. And similar to Rebecca, he does not fill his role. And even worse, he mistrusts his team. He, there is one quote in the case where he says, well, before I, I or when they do it, they, they mess it up, so I have to do it myself and all these type of things. And it is probably true that they're messing it up, but every time he is doing it instead of them and instead of asking them, helping them to correct their errors, he will keep them in the state of underperformance. So every time he's solving an issue for them, they will not learn how to solve their issue themselves. Of course, that takes time, and time is something that they probably don't ha have. So he has no time or doesn't take the time to develop his sales team. And from my point of view, the team management and the sales figures completely derail. And I'm asking myself the question, will he survive in the new position as well? Because if he is the only one who is successful in the whole sales department, of course, the sales team or the sales overall will not work the intended way. And he has to take care of his sales team because if we now take a look at the sales team and there is one thing that is really should raise a red flag from my point of view, the sales team is in farming mode. Farming mode means that they have existing clients and that they try to farm the clients. So they're not trying to get new clients, they work with the old clients and try to get sales from them, which is not bad at all, but you cannot increase, in most cases at least, your sales volume by doing that. And they are not used to hunt compared to farming. And hunting, of course, is the more difficult aspect of sales. If you farm existing clients, that's quite the easy thing. You just call people, you tell them you know me, and so on and so forth. It's an easy entry. It is much more difficult to cold call people and to hunt for new clients. And it's, it seems like they want to avoid that. They don't like that. Or they are so inexperienced and insecure that they need someone to show them how to do that. At the same time, like Hans thinks, in my words, they're idiots. They cannot do it right. They mistrust their boss. They are wondering what his bonus scheme is because he's selling so much and they don't see that, that he's doing it to save them. So you could solve that by talking to each other, but there doesn't seem to be time to do that. And if Hans is not taking time to talk to them, not developing the team, the team remains inexperienced or demotivated and ultimately become pass passive and frustrated, which is something that you can already see in the case, I would say. And here, the question for me is, will the young ones stay in the company and will the old ones be able to change their behavior? And I'm consciously not saying their mindset. That is probably something that you should do, but I don't like that phrase, which is an entirely different topic. So these are a couple of the key issues. Let's talk about the key issues real quick, maybe four key issues just to recap them. So first one, head of sales, Hans does not fill the role of a leader and seems to struggle either because of personal dispositions or the situation he's in, and the aversion to employees' voice and silence resistance. Let's take a look at the theory, if you have the time. Second key issue, Rebecca is also struggling with the transition into the new role, and she does not realize that these soft factors are more important in a new role than the hard skills that she's probably very competent in. Third reason, 
that the VP, Thomas, does not realize that his head of sales is working too much in daily business and he doesn't coach him. So there is no support from this side. And the fourth key issue from my point of view is that the VP does not see that he and the sales team are responsible for a successful change and not the consultant. And this puts pressure on Rebecca and can be dangerous, dangerous threat to her first performance review. And these were, let's say, the four key issues from my point of view. And there are many, many more. And I already mentioned a couple of them. Like people do not publicly talk about negative aspects and simulate commitments in meetings that uh, people are young, inexperienced in the sales team, and there is no budget or no time to train them. That spending to hire new or qualified staff is very restricted, making the quality of the sales force low, which results in less sales ultimately. And there is kind of a vicious cycle. There is a low skill workforce that leads to low business deal and that leads to pressure on the head of sales, which decreases the time he spends to train his people because he's selling in the field. And to me, it is not clear why the CRM has to be implemented now. It seems like a random project they have started. Somebody thought it's a good idea, and now they have missed the opportunity to stop it, which might be one of the options we're going to talk about later on. And I don't know how this can in any way solve the issues uh, that are seen in the department. Then there are a lot of parallel topics on the customer side. Uh, they're entering a new market, they're implementing a new software, there are new people, um, and so on and so forth. So there's total chaos uh, in a way, but you can also argue it's totally normal what's happening there. And like I said in the beginning, the mentoring concept seems to be very, very strange. Uh, they see each other only by appointment and the mentor lets her wait, uh, even at a scheduled meeting, and these type of things. So. Let's uh, take a little bit a look into the probably into the um, options and what what kind of opportunities or chances are there to fix this in a way and we will might or we might get back to uh, theory or I suggest to read through the theory in the section of the case and the theory namely is um, the aversion to employees' voice and silence resistance or organizational silence. It is um, the homo habitus repetition compulsion, you would call it. It would be much more harder. Repetition compulsion in psychology is, is really an illness, so it is much softer here, but people fall back to behavior they know, which gives them comfort. So these are basically the two main theoretical aspects, plus role theory, uh, Katz and Kahn, for example, to name uh, two authors who are very good in that. So let's take a look at the options and start with Rebecca's options. And I would say that there are no good or easy solutions in this case. One could say it's a situation with the task to avoid the worst impact on Rebecca personally for a company that might lose a client and for Hans to be lost in his new job as the head of sales and for the client company of Rebecca that struggles with several issues losing money. So what are the options or the bad options uh, probably? And we might find a good one among the bad or a less bad one, so to speak. So option one could probably be stop the project. And I'm going to wrap up each one of them. So stop the project would probably be the first option. Second option would be to continue and hope for the best, plus some actions like additional training, additional information. Um, third one that constantly comes up in discussions is bonus for the sales team to use the tool. That was one recommendation of Rebecca's team. And let's talk about that real quick as well. Fourth option would be talk to the VP into reducing the sales figures. And uh, fifth one, point the issue in the sales department, point to the issue in the sales department that the head of sales does not accept his role. So let's go through them. And like I said in the beginning, this, this is not an exhaustive list. Maybe you come up with one or two more, or you would say one of the five that I just mentioned is totally nonsense, doesn't make sense at all. Feel free to, um, to enlarge the list or to break it down if you want. So let's talk about stopping the project. And I mean, 
it's not a really good idea for Rebecca. She's being paid for it, um, but it might be one option for Thomas to say, hey, let's stop it. So from Rebecca's perspective, and this is what we are talking about at the moment, I would say it's not a real option, but again, it could be one for Thomas. From my point of view, he's the only one who could stop it. The second one, continue and hope for the best, obviously not a really good idea, at least from my point of view, it would be way too passive. In such a position, Rebecca has to approach decisions proactively. As a consultant, I, I, I would think that this is a good consultant. If she's proactive, she would be a bad consultant if she's passive. And you might have another opinion on that. So let's take a look at the pros and cons. I mean, the pro could be, and sometimes it might make sense to just sit and wait, that time might prove that the system is a good one and people might adapt it and finally use it. You know, the drill, usually when you change something, people complain in the beginning and then in the end, they never want to go back. But that's a fast stretch, I would say, in this case. And additional information rounds might convince the sales people. But then there is the problem. Um, why didn't that work out in the first place? So what she, is she going to say that will lighten up their mood and change something? I have no idea what that is. So there are many more cons from my point of view. And from my point of view, it's very unlikely that time will influence the project and that the people will change their behavior. And the head of sales will still not lead by example, which is a problem and especially a problem because you cannot convince people if your boss doesn't lead by example in many cases, at least in this case, I would say. Waiting will not change the lack of trust in the sales department as well. And the low budget and less qualified salespeople will not get more support or budget issues won't be solved when someone tries to convince the team artist. So again, continue hope for the best, not a good idea. So the next option would be a bonus for the sales team to use the tool. And I, I, honestly, I think it's quite interesting. A lot of um, people come up with that. A lot of people think, hey, wh why not do that? Um, and for me, it's not a really good idea. It might be a short-term solution, but and that's the only pro in that case. There are many, many more cons that would lead um, to definitely not doing that. Because, I mean, Using a CRM system, it's part of their job. Why pay them for it? You're not paying people to use Word or Excel or PowerPoint if this is part of the job. So why would you pay them to, um, to use the CRM system? It sounds a bit desperate to me, honestly, which they probably are. And if you would do it, uh, how high should the bonus be? When would you stop paying the bonus? Uh, should every new employee get a bonus and all these things? A bonus would increase the financial problems and reduce the margin that is already quite low. And one of my former students, he worked in sales and he said, uh, this sales is not for the weak at heart. There will be always pressure in such a job. And again, it will not solve most of the key issues in the case. So the bonus for the sales team, from my point of view, not really a good idea. Now, the next one, she could talk to the VP, to Thomas, into reducing the sales figures. And again, I'm not really convinced about that. It's, from my point of view, not a really good idea. Could be seen as an interference with the strategy of the company. Rebecca is an IT consultant and not hired or probably also not qualified to propose such things. So there are no pros basically to do that, I would say. Um, on the contrary, there are a couple of cons. I mean, Thomas might not be too happy if an external consultant tries to interfere with the company's sales strategy. Um, and the sales numbers have to increase because of the new highs and the change from farming to hunting. It might be an option. It might be an option if Thomas and Rebecca have a very good relationship. So if Thomas is listening to her and trusts her. But if I read the case, it doesn't seem to be um, that good of a relationship. So not a very good idea. So next one, pointing to the issue in the sales department so that this head of sales does not accept his role. And this is probably something she could do, even if this might be a risky move. Um, but it, it has some pros from my point of view. For me, it is one of the 
best short-term solutions, especially with the VP realizing that there are a lot more issues going on and probably the VP will come to the conclusion to stop a couple of these things or reprioritize a couple of things. And again, whether this is a solution or not, this might be linked to the question whether Rebecca is being trusted or has a high degree of credibility with Hans and with Thomas, of course. And there are also a lot of cons. It's very risky. Changing the behavior of a person might be very, very difficult. And I don't believe in the idea that is quite popular sometimes uh, that people have to change their mindset. If it would be so easy, um, everyone would do it. So it can be doubted that this will happen and that she as an IT consultant is capable or willing to initiate this. And especially Hans has to accept that he has to change and that he probably needs coaching. You cannot just tell him that he's going to do it. That will not be as successful as if he realizes that. On the other hand, it might be possible that if you stop the vicious cycle, just pull him out of daily business, maybe he realizes. We, we don't know. But Rebecca does not have a high credibility from my perspective in the organization. And the client might think that she tries to move his responsibility away uh, from herself. So these are basically all of the bad options that Rebecca has. And maybe you come up with a better one. But for me, it's kind of a lost cause in a way. Let's talk a bit about the performance appraisal and Rebecca's uh, performance appraisal and the question who is responsible for the change. And I think that Rebecca might not be responsible for the successful change in her client's organization, but she's responsible for contacting her mentor too late in the process. This is something that I really say that, that was too late. She should have known it. It might be possible that the project is already that much derailed that there is no chance of getting it back on track and asking so help of asking for help so late in the process can be a sign that Rebecca underestimated the risk or she overestimated her skills to deal with the situation. It might also be possible that she did not ask for help to show that she is able to deal with such a situation herself, something that obviously backfired at her. But that's just a fantasy. We don't know that. And I mean, questions might be raised whether she did a sound assessment of the situation at the beginning or not. I mean, the issues are hard, but not impossible to see for an external consultant. If you're experienced, probably you would see that. And maybe two changes at once may be too much for the company, entering a new market and the new system. But it's a normal that several parallel projects are being carried out in an organization. So that might be, again, a good idea to take a look at some theory. 7S framework, uh, for example, is one thing. So one aspect of the 7S framework, the McKinsey 7S framework, is they implemented a system, but what is the strategy or shared values? What are the skills and the staff and these type of things? So 7S might be a valuable addition to the case here. So these are things she might have discussed before the project kickoff. Now it's probably too late. On the other hand, I don't want to sound too negative. I would say overall, Rebecca is not ultimately responsible for the successful change in the client's organization or of the client. However, from my point of view, the impact on the performance review will be negative because of the following reasons. There are three reasons from my point of view why the performance appraisal will be negative. It has to be negative. The first reason is that she had been incapable to adapt to a new role and neglected or did not see the potential human risks. The second is that she did not conduct a good assessment of the situation and the project before she agreed to do it. And I mean, the question is, would it be possible not to do it? But that's another topic. Uh, and the third one, she did not proactively ask for help from her mentor and raise the red flag way too late from my point of view. If I were her boss, I would reduce the negative impact when she would be able to reflect the things above and when she would try to solve the issue to reduce the impact in a way. And the only way is to point out all the issues and make them transparent to the client. And to do this, she needs credibility and trust on the side of the client when she's not able to establish both, the impact of the review would be negative. So that was Rebecca. Let's briefly talk about the options of Thomas, the VP, because we touched upon this a couple of times. 
Um, and you can discuss that in the case, you can skip it in the case if uh, you want to. Um, I think it makes sense because his impact is much higher than Rebecca's impact, but he has to realize that there is a problem that goes beyond sheer numbers. And this is Hans, his head of sales. And his options with Hans are threefold from my point of view. First one, probably the easiest one is fire Hans, but beware, we're going to talk about the pros and cons. Second one, coach him. I already mentioned that. And third one is giving a position that fits his competency. And um, sometimes you could come up with the idea to support Hans with an assistant, maybe at the fourth reason, but I, I would say this is not going to solve any of the issues. Um, it would only maintain the situation as it is. Plus, it's an additional headcount, which is additional costs for the assistant. And the options the VP has are very similar to a situation, uh, by the way, that is described in another case. It's the Keller case, Wolfgang Keller case, just if you want to check that out. Um, and uh, so let's go into these individual options. The three one again, fire hunts, coaching, giving a position that fits his competence, quote unquote, putting an assistant at his side. So firing Hans, again, I would say easiest option, but also the least creative option. And for me, it is only acceptable when a suitable and fast replacement would be available. But overall, I would say it's not a very good solution. It would make the problem worse because of the loss of the revenue generated by Hans. There are maybe two pros. I would say he's not leading, so a leader would not be lost. And it's questionable that he would be able to change his style in time, whatever timing might mean here. And um, by the way, that's an interesting question. How much time would you give him to learn or not to learn? So these are the pros and maybe cons already. So and there are many more cons that where I would say don't fire this guy. There are many, many cons because it's only a solution if a good replacement is at hand and he or she could be hired quite fast, which is not very common in this position. Uh, the case is located in Germany with very strict labor laws regarding Syrians pay notice periods uh, of usually six months in such a position. Um, Thomas would avoid dealing with the situation in a way, uh, and both Hans and himself would learn from it if they would be coached. If Hans would be fired, neither Thomas nor Hans would learn from the situation. There would be creation of a leadership vacuum unless the position can be filled very fast, even if Hans does not really lead. His leadership is not 0%. So if, if you would remove him, you would take away all the leadership, even if it's not a lot from the department. That would, will create a void, a vacuum, uh, and that will lead to a lot of chaos and, and problems as well. It has to be, it will be filled. And we don't know how it will be filled at that point. Um, an unexperienced or unmotivated team would be left alone without a boss, but at the same time, the best salesperson would be fired. Pretty bad idea, I would say. And like I said, firing someone should always be the very last and not very creative option, at least from my perspective. It could also be a signal that people are getting fired when they do not perform. Some, something that can also be a pro argument, depending on the culture of the organization you're working in. But I would consider it quite negative because nobody helped him. At least we don't see that someone helped him. And um, it might be possible that the employees do not understand why exactly Hans had been fired. They might may draw the wrong conclusions. And overall, I would say it would not change the issue that the team is inexperienced, that there is low budget and all these things. So firing Hans, from my point of view, not a very good idea. Coaching Hans, on the contrary, is probably the best solution, but only the one that shows impact on the long run. Again, how much time do they have? Another pro would be that both will learn. Thomas to coach a leader below him and Hans to adapt to the new role. But again, it's a long-term solution and this would show that the company is investing in people. They're giving them time, which could be quite beneficial. But again, a con is the time pressure. It's questionable that he would be able to change his style. He hunts in time, again, whatever that means. And the, the worst problem from my point of view is that a high degree of reflection from Hans and Thomas is needed and that Thomas has to be less pushy and more supportive and that this will happen 
that's probably theory and doesn't happen in real life uh, in this case. So it's probably the best solution, but also the most difficult one in a way. Uh, third option was to give him, a give him a position that fits his competency or to uh, give him an assistant in a way that, uh, that is supporting him. And that's probably the second best solution when Hans would accept it and a suitable replacement can be found in time. But, I mean, they, they, the organization would keep the revenue that is being generated by Hans. That's probably pro. But Hans has to accept the lower position and possible a salary cut that has to come uh, with it. And there is another increase in the cost. Hans as an additional team member plus a new head of sales. I mean, probably that's not a con, that's a neutral aspect. If Hans is earning what he's costing, so that would be cost-benefit analysis. But another con would be that, again, there will be creation of a leadership vacuum unless the position cannot be filled very fast. I already mentioned that. And um, it's unlikely that Hans will be able to coach his peers when he's a team member regarding sales. So second best option, but still not a very good option from my point of view. So that was a very brief reflection about so what is happening in the case, the new CRM system. We talked about the key issues. We talked about several other issues, and we talked about the options that Rebecca has and the options that Thomas has as the VP. And as we have seen, it's a very tricky case. It's a difficult case. It's a situation where I hope that you are not in um, because it's, uh, I said it's a lost cause. Maybe it's not lost cause, but it's a really, really tricky situation and it's hard to solve. And for me, it comes back, always comes back to the relationship and the inside, the reflection of the involved people. Do they really see what is going on? And again, if you have done this case and you want to dig a little bit deeper into role theory and defenses and these type of things, that might be a good starting point uh, in this case to do that. So I hope you enjoyed it. The very brief reflection of this case and hope to hear you next time.